and thanks to a Hail Mary play from Rodgers to Rodgers, the Packers beat the Lions and closed in on the NFC North lead. Green Bay now only a half game behind first place Minnesota in the division. Meanwhile, the Lions had a three-game winning streak, but that was snapped in their sitting in last place. Minnesota takes on Seattle at home on Sunday. Stephen A., will the Pack win the NFC North? I believe they will. Um, not just because of that bad man, Aaron Rodgers, not just because, uh, you know, they pulled off a miracle last night, but primarily due to the Vikings schedule. I know they're the number three ranked, de number two ranked defense in points allowed. I know they have the number one Russian. I think he's got some promise. But I, I think he's put forth a relatively pedestrian performance this year. Yeah, he's completed 65 percent of his passes. That's to be committed. But he's only thrown eight touchdowns to seven interceptions. He's got a QBR of 64. It's not bad, uh, but he's only thrown for 2,200 yards this year. They run the football effectively because they have the best running back in football in Adrian Peterson, who's averaging nearly five yards a carry and has already rushed for 1,164 yards. So they run the football effectively. They play stout defense, which is to be commended. But their next four, their next five games, Skip, are against Seattle, a game I think they will lose. They're at Arizona. They play Chicago. And, and the Vikings can easily struggle by losing three of those five games. That would put them at about 11 and 5. Um, I'm sorry, 10 and 6, rather. And I think that, you know, this division possibly will be run, won with an 11 and 5 record. So I'm of the mindset that obviously they have the ingredients, the formula to be successful because when you can run the football effectively and you can defend, that speaks to something. But I think at some point in time, those teams that I mentioned, at least four of them, at least three of them, I'm sorry, will make Teddy Bridgewater have to beat them. And I don't know if he's going to be capable of doing that, Skip. I hear you. But did, did I also just hear you say that I think by default you're saying Minnesota will beat your Giants at Minnesota, right? Well, I'm not saying that definitively. I'm just saying that I think they could lose three of the next five games, whatever those four, whatever those oh. three games are. You got Seattle, you got at Arizona, you got loss, at Green loss, Bay to close out loss. the season, That's and three. you got the Giants and Chicago okay. in between. Well, I'm, so I'm, I think the Vikings will lose. Okay, so they got the two home games, and I think you're conceding that they'll win two home games against the Bears and the Giants because I really, really need them to beat the Giants. So I'm good with that. So now back to the question. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm with you. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all over it, man. So I'm with you. I think the Seahawks will win this game at Minnesota. I think it's made to order for Seattle. And I agree with you when you have the number one, the, as the Vikings do, number one rush attack, thanks to Adrian Peterson. Number two, defense and points allowed. That's formidable at home. But listen, Russell Wilson, we haven't talked a lot about him on this show lately. He has taken it to another level in the last two games. Three touchdown passes two games ago and then five last week. He's thrown it so well from the fell with 60 two and a half percent completions of 10 yards or more he's thrown it down the field mm -hmm. for big gains now obviously he lost a big receiver in Jimmy Graham but as you pointed out Jimmy Graham hadn't become that pivotal in the offense so far he, he it wasn't like that's his guy his go-to guy so I think he'll miss him a little not a lot but that defense against Teddy Bridgewater at Minnesota I just I don't think the Vikings can score in that game they have to hold teams under 20 to beat them. And I think, I think Seattle will score 24 and hold Adrian and company to 14. So that would be a loss for the Vikings. Now back to Aaron Rodgers Packers. So then they will have left Cowboys at home, at Raiders, at Cardinals, and then Vikings at home to close. So I could see them winning three of those games. Obviously, Cowboys at Raiders and Vikings. But the, the crucial game, the one that's, that's interesting to me, is Cowboys at Packers because I will remind you, my Cowboys owe them for last year because we all know that was a catch. And we all know that oh. Dez and company will go to Lambeau with revenge on their minds. And we all know that just recently, Aaron Rodgers has lost at Lambeau. Is this possible to Detroit and Chicago at Lambeau? I mean... Listen, they pulled off the miracle last night. They were really good on defense in the second half. 
They were also down 17 to nothing to Detroit at halftime last night. They goose egged in the first half. Are you sure? Are you sure about that game? I'm not sure. Just throwing that out. Ellen Moore. Well, what? Well, Ellen Moore. Ellen <laughs> Moore. Well, I, th uh, I, 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 I think the I think the fact. He'll bring us more. I think yeah. the fact. <clears throat> the fact that you have, I think, Green Bay has three things in its favor. The next two games for Minnesota are against Seattle and Arizona. The next two games for Green Bay are Dallas and Oakland. Plus, the home game that they have to close out the season is against Minnesota. Yep. So I think the combination of all those things, those are three components over the last, over the last five weeks of the season that I think work to Green Bay's advantage more so than Minnesota's. Okay. I, I would mostly agree with you, but I don't think the Packers are playing at such a high level that this is a done deal yet. I think it could get real dicey. Okay, that's fair. For Aaron. That's fair, Aaron. but not against the Cowboys. Not against the Cowboys, because the Cowboys have Matt Castle. They don't have Tony Romo. Or so Kellen I'm not worried Moore. about that at all. Yeah. You never know. Oh, I'm sorry, Kellen Moore. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. You no. mean the dude that they jumped, they, they, they cut from the practice squad they and then did. brought him back on? Around. Oh, that guy. I got yeah. it. He's I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. He, Silly he, me. He's like Silly me. Joe Montana Jr. Yeah. You know, one of those. Yeah. No, practice, No man. blue turf anymore. We're talking All about right. practice. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. Expectations were high for J.J. Watt this season, and now the Texans' defense is finally living up to the billing. Will they continue their dominance when they travel to Buffalo? That's next. Please don't knock I mean, this is unbelievable. You need to show him more respect. And you can say that nonsensical stuff. And then the top down. You're moody. I'm not joking, bro. First Take is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch to the Data Strong Network. It's official. Coldplay will perform at halftime of Super Bowl 50 in Santa Clara. Stephen A., you good with this? I'm good with it. I mean, I, I, I like Coldplay. I mean, Paradise what? is the joint. Don't what? know if you ever heard that song, what? Skip. Paradise. Oh, I got to hear Princess of China. Wait, 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 wait. I, I swear to you, I, I, don't get me started singing. I don't want to hurt your ears. Oh. But Paradise, I listen to Paradise every day. I'm not and buying Clocks, it. let's not forget that song. Let's not forget that. I, I like, I like Coldplay. This. I like Coldplay. Are you yeah. good with it? Coldplay well, leaves me a little cold. I'm People sorry. who know oh, me know so I harsh. like Coldplay. I'm not on a Friday. Sorry. <laughs> a good weekend. Unbelievable. Woo. This is a witch hunt. I am sick to death, dead wrong. The odds are in your favor. No, you don't. Top high and dry. It's unbelievable. Tell me you can't close that deal. <laughs> I won the fight. <laughs>